Hey, I'm Kier, and this is that vlog thing that I'm doing. The recognition of death is one of the key components used to determine when culture began to develop, specifically religion began to develop among our ancestors. There are funerary rites dating back over 300,000 years uh, for Neanderthals, uh, even before Homo sapiens uh, came on the scene. So it, the differentiation between being alive and being here and being dead and maybe somewhere else is really one of the things that human minds have contemplated the most. It's a key factor in every religion out there. It's the focus of a lot of scientific study. Uh, it's something we try to prevent for as long as possible through medicine and other scientific advances. Uh, and that realization of our own mortality uh, is kind of our rite of passage into adulthood in the modern world. Coming to terms with that has really led to a lot of deep thought on what the afterlife could be. Many uh, religions have dealt with contacting the spirits of your ancestors to gain new knowledge and, and insight into life, uh, because the afterlife provides a different view of the life that was lived. There are a lot of different ways that people have tried to communicate with the dead over the years. The more recent kinds saw their birth in 1848 up near Hydesville, New York. Uh, the Fox Sisters came on the scene and they uh, are generally recognized as the first members of the spiritualist movement that, that came through uh, the U.S. and Europe uh, in the latter half of the 19th century up through the very beginning of the 20th century. And what the main focus of that movement was, was communicating with the dead. And a lot of our current uh, traditions and thoughts and ideas about ghosts and the afterlife, how we can communicate with them and the problems that come up with that are all deeply anchored in that spiritualist movement because it was quite prevalent. There were psychics and mediums all over the place. They were, they were seances being held in just about every major city in the country and all over Europe. Uh, there were people making names for themselves, uh, rubbing elbows with royalty, because they claimed that they could speak with the dead. It was a regular thing to have go on. Now, it wasn't looked upon kindly by everyone. Uh, the Catholic Church definitely had a big problem with it. Some Protestant denominations had some serious problems with it. Uh, and being that those were the major religions in a lot of these places, there was a lot of backlash against spiritualism. And it didn't help any that a lot of these spiritualist mediums were uh, hucksters and frauds who were taking advantage of people's willingness to believe. There are reams and reams of, of pages written about the different ways that these mediums would fake spirit communication. Uh, secret doors uh, in rooms behind curtains, the, the table tapping that was all mechanical. Uh, it's really a shame that there were so many who were frauds because there were a handful who were never able to be pinned as frauds. Uh, for a while, the Fox sisters weren't able to be pinned as frauds, but they uh, apparently lost their mojo somewhere along the way and started faking their results. But what this all did is this created a deep interest in what the afterlife was actually like. Uh, so there are books written uh, about the afterlife that if they are even vaguely accurate, 
Ghosts are sitting in offices using computers right now because in the late 1800s, the descriptions of the afterlife are so incredibly contemporary to life then that there must be some sort of progression that has gone on. And, and it's vaguely amusing uh, and also probably a testament to just how much interpretation the living uh, give to what they think the dead are saying. Now, some of the methods uh, of spirit communication are pretty simple. Uh, there's table tapping and table tipping that go on, which is basically a bunch of people sitting around a table asking questions of the spirits that are there, and then things start knocking. The table may rock a little bit. Uh, and those are interpreted as yes or no answers, tapping out letters of the alphabet. Uh, th those are relatively simple things. Those evolved into our talking boards, like our Ouija boards with our planchettes that move around and actually uh, hit letters as opposed to having to wait for things to tap out. But more impressive were the trance mediums, the ones who would go into trances and either produce visions in ectoplasm, which a lot of the time was cotton that they had pre-prepared, uh, or voices coming out of talking horns, which sometimes were indeed recordings being played back from a secret door in the room or an assistant uh, dressed in black carrying things around in the darkened room telling the gathered participants in the seance uh, things about their loved ones or messages from their loved ones and people bought it people bought it a lot because there's a desperation in a lot of humanity to know what comes after we die. And the simple answer is that we have no good proof of what comes after we die, but we have a lot of hope and a lot of supposition. The spiritualist movement as a whole rolled along solidly from the 1840s all the way through and past the 1920s, given a huge boost uh, during World War I. After the 1920s, uh, things slowed down a little bit. The, the psychics and the spiritualists never really went away. There are still plenty of mediums out there today. Uh, there are uh, plenty of people who, who still go to psychics with the hope of, of contacting uh, dead relatives or gaining insight in some way, shape, or form from the afterlife. Uh, I know I did a whole lot of very interesting experimentation uh, in college with a talking board, which is theoretically communication with the dead, but not always. The, there's psychics out there now, like John Edward, uh, who for a while uh, had his own show on television, uh, and, and who is still makes the rounds every now and then, packing rooms full of people. Uh, James Von Prow is, is another one, Sylvia Brown, another psychic, uh, tons and tons of psychics out there who still claim to speak to the dead. And sometimes, sometimes it seems like they pull some pretty amazing information out of thin air. Now today, it's nowhere near as impressive as it used to be because a quick Google search can give you more than enough information about a large percentage of the population to be able to fool them into believing that you have information coming from the great beyond. This is why having some healthy skepticism is a really good idea if you're someone interested in psychic abilities, because you have to understand how easy it is to fake these things, how easy a cold reading can be. There's some fantastic books out there about this stuff. Uh, one of the ones that, that uh, came out just a couple years ago uh, is this one. It's a history of ghosts. 
uh, and it's by Peter Aykroyd. The True Story of Seances, Medium, Ghosts, and Ghostbusters. And Dan Aykroyd writes in his foreword, uh, My father, as a child, witnessed seances and kept the family books on the subject. My brother Peter and I read them avidly, and from all this, Ghostbusters got made. Both believers and non-believers will, first, be highly entertained and then surprisingly enlightened by these stories of real empiricists chasing ghosts. So this is uh, by Peter Aykroyd, that's Dan Aykroyd's father, uh, and this is a great rundown of a lot of the uh, seance protocols, a lot of the uh, famous mediums of the time that, that came through places, and uh, really a, a clear indication of how much of an impact that time had on today's world. I mean, it's because of this that we still have uh, ghostbusters around and, and people investigating uh, the paranormal the way they do. It was from people trying to figure out how mediumship worked that a lot of the parapsychological research came into play. Uh, and how all of that ha is, is still ongoing today. Uh, so there's a lot more that can be said about that. A lot of neat little stories. And if you have any stories about dealing with uh, mediums or psychics or ghosts, uh, let me know in the comments or send me a message through that link in the, uh, in the description. And uh, I want to hear your stories. Uh, and now that we've got some groundwork laid, I'm going to pull out some specific stories from a bunch of the books and other and personal experience, uh, and we'll be getting into those as we wrap up October. Uh, so spiritualism, really interesting subject, uh, ran for a good long time in the U.S. and Europe, uh, concurrently with a whole lot of secret societies and magical fraternal orders, all played a big part in crafting the psychic world today and the, the ghost and haunting world today. Uh, if you like this video, uh, hit the like button. If you want to get notified of these as they come up, uh, subscribe down below. Uh, and if uh, you know anyone who's interested in this subject, share this video with them. I uh, get it out there going around because I want to hear their stories too. Uh, so that's it for today. I'm Kier. And I guess I'll see you tomorrow.